Ameloblastoma is considered as the true benign neoplasm of the enamel organ. It has been described by Robinson as a tumor that is usually unicentric, non-functional, intermittent in growth, anatomically benign and clinically persistent. If we take a look at the history of ameloblastoma, Broca gave the first detailed description of the tumor. It was initially called as adamantinoma by malices. But the term adamantinoma implies that there is formation of heart tissue in the tumor, which is actually not the case. The term ameloblastoma was then suggested by Gallipay and then Churchill propounded it. But actually speaking, the term ameloblastoma can also be considered as a misnomer because it implies that the tumor originates from the ameloblasts, which is not true. The cells of the tumor are pre-ameloblasts or immature ameloblasts as they are not differentiated enough to form enamel. Among all the odontogenic tumors, ameloblastoma is the second most common odontogenic neoplasm and only odontoma outnumbers it if you consider odontoma tumor and not a hamartoma. Let's talk about its pathogenesis. In the classification of odontogenic tumors, ameloblastoma is classified in the epithelial group. That is, only the epithelial component is neoplastic and not the connective tissue. So, ameloblastomas may be derived from various epithelial sources in the dental apparatus. Most commonly, it develops from the cell rests of the enamel organ either remnants of dental lamina or remnants of the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath. Then it may develop from the epithelium of any odontogenic cyst, particularly the dentigerous cyst. Any type of disturbance of the developing enamel organ may also give rise to ameloblastoma. And finally, cells of the stratum basale of the surface epithelium have been considered as an important source, especially in peripheral ameloblastoma. Now coming to the clinical features. The range of 33 to 39 years is the average age of diagnosis of ameloblastoma. There is no significant sex predilection. Ameloblastomas occur way more commonly in the mandible than in the maxilla and within the mandible, the molar angle ramus area is involved most commonly. Though less common, Ameloblastomas of maxilla are known to be more aggressive and have a poorer prognosis. Patient generally complains of a slow growing swelling which causes asymmetry in the face. Patient may also complain of mobility or exfoliation of teeth adjacent to the swelling. The swelling itself is painless but may cause pain or paresthesia if it is impinging on an adjacent nerve. On clinical examination, an obvious facial asymmetry seen due to the swelling. The overlying skin and mucosa is smooth and without any change in the color, though advanced lesions may show ulcerations. On palpation, the swelling is hard in consistency. Continuous tumor expansion may lead to thinning of the cortical plate, causing an eggshell cracking and crepitation. As the tumor has a slow growth rate, it allows the periosteum to develop a thin shell of bone ahead of the expanding lesion. This thin shell of bone cracks when palpated and hence called egg shell cracking. Perforation of bone is very rarely seen. Now let's see how it looks on the x-ray. The most common radiographic feature seen of ameloblastoma is a multilocular radiolucency in the jaw. The tumor exhibits a compartmented appearance with septa of bone extending into the radiolucent tumor mass. This type of radiolucency is often called as soap bubble appearance if the size of the locules is uneven or honeycomb appearance if the locules are of even size. Desmoplastic ameloblastoma is the only histological subtype which may cause radio opacities within the radiolucent lesion due to the areas of bone formation.